Hi guys, welcome to another maths tutorial brought to you by Direct Tutoring. Today we're going to have a look at solving indices. Now, indices are basically powers of letters. So you can have any letter with as many powers as possible. And it's basically an easy way and convenient way of representing letters with very large powers. So, for example, if you have a to the power 4, that is essentially the same as a times a times a times a. So if you have, say, a to the power 10, rather than writing 10 a's, you just write a to the power 10. So there are four laws of indices. Law number one is when you times indices, you add the powers. So if you have a times a then say this was 2, then it would be 2 times a, which would give you 2a, and then you add the powers. So if that was, say, 5, and that was 2, it would be 2a to the power 7. Second law is the opposite. If times is add, then divide must be take away. Third law is a power of a power. So if you had, say, a to the power 2, to the power 3, that would be 3 times 2, which will give you a to the power 6. And the fourth law is when you have multiple letters or numbers within a bracket all to the same power. Now, this law tends to be written the other way around in questions. So it might be you're combining these two variables into one. If they share the same power, you can combine them. So you can split these apart. So if that was, say, 2a, then you could have, to the power p, you would have 2 to the power p times a to the power p. So they still keep the same power. They're just separated. So if we have a look at question 1. Question 1 asks us to simplify p cubed to the power 4 times p squared. So in this example, we have to use rules 1 and 3 from before. So if we deal with rule 3 first, we'll deal with this. So this applies to rule 3, because you have a power of a power, which is 3 times 4, which is here. So your answer would be p to the power 12 times p squared. Now, this has now become rule 1. So what we can do is when we times them, we add the powers, so 12 plus 2, so p to the power 14, and that is your final answer for simplifying this question here. Question number 2, we'll use a combination of rules 1 and 2. Now there are multiple ways that you could do this. You could do b cubed divided by b to the power 7 times b to the power 9 divided by b to the power 7. But the easiest way is to combine the top line into a single variable. So we have to use rule 1 to begin with, because we have times in the indices, so we have to add them. Rule 1. So we get b to the power 12 divided by b to the power 7. Now this is when rule 2 is used because we are dividing the indices. So if we divide indices, we take the values away. So it's top, take away the bottom. So your final answer becomes b to the power 5. Now there are three other manipulations that you need to know. The zero power law, anything to the power zero, whether it be a letter, whether it be a number, or a fraction, or anything, Anything to the power 0 is always 1. So if you see a to the power 0, it's 1. If you have 3,295 to the power 0, it's 1. Then you have what's called the negative power law. A lot of the time the questions like to ask for your final answer as a positive power. Now the way that you do that is you have to do 1 over the power. Okay, so 1 over this entire thing, i.e. you take the inverse of this, because the inverse is 1 over. 
So it becomes 1 over, and then the power becomes positive. So it's 1 over a to the power positive 3. And likewise, if you were to take this up to the top, it would become a to the power minus 3. And then the power to a third law. This one can pose numerous problems in the exam, but so long as if you can try and visualise what this looks like, it will help you so much when you come to answer these questions. All you have to remember is this is the root. Now, on a fraction, the root is always at the bottom. So if you were asked, say, write this as third notation, so the root is whatever the bottom of the fraction is, and then it's all to the power of the numerator of the fraction. So if that was, say, 3 over 2, that would be the square root of a to the power 3. Okay? So if we have a look at question 3, it gives us the equation d cubed bracket d to the power 4 plus d to the minus 3. So the so first thing we have to do is multiply out the bracket. So do d cubed times d to the power 4 plus d cubed times d to the power minus 3. And if we do that, we'll get, this is rule number 1. So it's d cubed times d to the 4, so you add the power, so you get d to the power 7. Likewise here, 3 plus minus 3 is 0. Now, anything to the power 0, we have to use the 0 power law. And your final answer becomes d to the power 7 plus 1. And then lastly, question 4, simplify the equation n cubed times n to the power minus 7, giving your answer as a positive power. Very, very important. This is where your last mark would come from in the exam. So again, similar thing as before. This is times, so you must add the indices together, rule number 1. So 3 plus minus 7 would just be 3 taken away 7. That will give you n to the power negative 4. So this is the negative power law. Now the way that you do that is 1 over all of this and that becomes positive 4. So it's 1 over n to the power positive 4. And that is your final answer. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Leave any comments in the comment section and we'll see you in the next video.